Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, Commission with a Dish. My name is Mike Frizzell. I'm one of the county commissioners, District 1. Um, we have another county commissioner here, Mark Wallaby, District 3, who is uh, joining us from the, uh, the other side of the county. Um, so the way this works is, uh, well, we've gone through phase one, the eating portion of it, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is the best phase. Um, so, so, I have, so it's really informal here. I have um, I know seven or eight talking points, and, and, and the concept basically is to bring you up to speed, uh, and I do this every six months, so to bring everybody up to speed on what happened in the county in the, in the last six months, uh, the, big, the big highlights, I would say. If you have a question about anything, you know, please please chime in. And not so much a question as having been a property owner in Park County for 40 years, I'd like to thank and commend you for doing this to keep us voters informed is really appreciated. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, um, it's like I said, I have seven or eight uh, talking points. Um, if you... Uh, I prefer not to get into a long discussion with them because it's going to drag the meeting out. I'm going to try to try to get through this in about a half an hour, and uh, and then we'll open it up. And if you have any uh, particular questions on, uh, if you want to discuss any of these in more detail, or I've missed something that you'd like to discuss, um, you know, please please bring it up. If you have any, so this is really a community meeting. So if you have any <clears throat> personal issues. Um, you know, my neighbor dog is too loud, or you know, those type, type of personal issues. Um, uh, there, we'll, I'll take those questions offline. We don't need to talk about it in, in the meeting. Um, and then at the very end, um, you can uh, tell me how deep the ruts are in your road and throw shoes at me. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully we fed you enough where you don't have the energy to do that. So, um, <clears throat> so the first thing I have on the, on the list is, is asset management. And, uh, you know, the county's uh, trying, you know, we're, we're a relatively poor county. And, um, and to manage, uh, you know, to waste money is, 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 is difficult. It's easy to do, but it um, does a pretty big disservice. So asset management has been identified as, as one of the critical things that, um, that as commissioners we've, uh, we're moving forward with. And one of them is a capital improvement plan. So the county owns 50-plus buildings. And, uh, you know, up until fairly recently, um, We've been more of a, a reactive than a proactive approach to the buildings in that, um, oh no, the boiler went out, we need to replace it now instead of, you know, the boiler's coming up due, maybe we should um, budget for that and replace that in, 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 a, in a few years. There's always going to be things that come up that break that you have to, that you have to uh, address, but long-term planning is, um, you know, is, is a crucial part of, of, uh, of capital management. Part of this is... Uh, is tearing down a couple buildings. We have a, a building or two that we've um, we went through a, a full assessment of every building, uh, documented uh, what we own, where it's at, what state it's in, and, uh, and there's a plan in place on um, you know how to how to maintain it, what the maintenance cost will be, and what the likely schedule for that would be. Uh, to give an example, you know uh, buildings that are in really bad shape, um, the Jefferson County. Um, um, Roads and Bridge building down there is is in dire straits, and they'll probably need to be replaced, torn down, and replaced. It's uh, unhabitable right now. It's it's dangerous, and uh, and most of the buildings are you know are are, are going to be uh, maintained and, and repaired accordingly. And there's there's you know as part of a county, there's likely to be new buildings that are going to be ended up built also. But you know the focus is again is in planning and to be more. Um, <clears throat> proactive than reactive. Another part of the asset management plan, uh, plan is fleet services. The county has a lot of cars and, um, and you know up until fairly recently each department kind of managed their own their own yeah, vehicles and, and you know and that left a lot of um, you know questions as to uh, you know was proper maintenance being done. Some of the vehicles were, were way past their cost-effective life, you know. When you start running vehicles past 200,000 miles, you're really throwing money away a lot of times when you're repairing them. So there's a, there's a plan in place. Unless it's a Subaru. Unless it's a Subaru, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we put a plan in place, and, uh, and it models 
Uh, we've studied the, uh, the state system and taken uh, the best pieces of their system and kind of migrated it into, into a plan. And um, so in the course of this, we've reduced the entire fleet by um, 10 plus vehicles. Good. And, uh, and, you know, and it turns out, you know, as, as most people know, it's more cost effective to, to start, you know, getting rid of vehicles when they're, you know, above a certain mileage. And, and it depends on the particular vehicle. We, we, we talked a little bit about just drawing a line and you know, some, some set number, but we, we found that even in the state, they have some discrepancies of, you know, a truck may, and I'm just making numbers up, but, you know, a truck may be, um, uh, may be valid until 150,000 miles, but, you know, a sedan may be need to replace at 120,000 miles. So, anyway, the plan's in place, and, and, uh, and now all the services and, and the maintenance are all, um, are all monitored and controlled by, uh, by one particular department um, that also does the, um, the capital management plan. So oil changes will be done on the recommended maintenance schedule. And tires won't have unsafe vehicles, and ultimately it'll it'll, it'll save the taxpayers money. Um, another thing that the county has taken on is a merit-based compensation plan. So if uh, if you would look, so so one of the problems with any type of um, you know employer employee relationship is is turnover. And uh, turnover is very, very costly to, to go through all the training um, you put into somebody and then have them and then have them leave. And and although uh, although salary is is never usually the, the the only component or the number one component, it's certainly a component. And we did an evaluation of uh, of all the uh, of all the job positions and descriptions, uh, which I think we have uh, 200 plus employees now at the county. And, um, and we compared them to similar counties, um, size-wise, and, uh, and similar job descriptions, and, and see where they fell on the, on the scale of compensation. And un unfortunately, we had you know, a number of positions that didn't even make the scale. They were off the scale to the, to the low end, to so the high end. You don't come to work for Park County to, you know, to get wealthy. So, um, so we put a plan in place, and, it, and it's merit-based also, and that's a key component. You don't see this a lot in, in governmental entities. And um, so, so you don't just get a raise just because uh, you've, you've been there longer. Right? Um, and this will reduce some uh, you know, potential cronyism you know, if your buddy's working there. So if you do better, there's incentive that you'll get rewarded for that. And I mean, this is common practice in you know, in the private sector, and, and we've uh, implemented it in Park County, and we think we'll have a, you know, a much better workforce uh, with doing this. And, and as the employee gets cross-trained in more jobs, and they become more valuable to us, then we compensate them for that. And, and hopefully they'll stay with us, and we won't, you know, we'll reduce the turnover. Um, telecommunications. So, um, as some of you are aware, you know, that's one of the, the big things that, um, mm -hmm. That, that I've taken on over the last year, and and that means uh, you know broadband shows up a lot, but it also means uh, cell phones also. So it's uh, and you know uh, broadband communication has been identified uh, nationally and state, and certainly in our county, as one of the number one economic drivers you can have um, in your in your uh, municipality. And, and Park County, like, like many other rural counties in Colorado, um, lacks significantly in that. Not so much on this side, on the Bailey side, because our proximity to Denver lends itself a little bit to more con connectivity. And a more condensed population. Yeah, way higher density, which you know, makes it more cost effective for infrastructure. And, you know, and, that, and that's the key problem, basically, is the infrastructure investment. All the, uh, all the low-hanging fruit from the providers you know, has been picked. And uh, so now the incentive to, to invest and to be able to attract the providers to, to put the equipment in is, is a challenge. And, uh, and the way this has been solved in other communities has been a, a public-private partnership, which is, uh, which, which is what we've been working um, with um, the a number of providers, and and uh, you know, and, and public pieces of this too, HOAs, school districts, um, and we have a meeting once a month. It's the first Monday of the month, 
at, at 10 o'clock in the Fair Play Community Center, and it's a, a local technology planning team meeting. And out of that came, uh, came quite a few projects. We have, a, uh, we have the Guffey Schools, and we identified Guffey because it was probably uh, the most difficult place to, to get this type of a service into in Park County. And we figured if we could get it in there, we could probably get it anywhere. So, we still don't have phones. They don't have Some phones. of the people do not have phones. When I, you know, when I went to the first, um, first Commission with a Dish meeting down there, outside the community center, I got there early, and they have a phone booth. And I hadn't, hadn't been in a phone booth in so long, you know? And uh, you know, I walked in there, and there was no phone. The phone was stripped out. I was kind of bummed, and there was a button. It said, in case of emergency, push this button. And I thought, where the hell does this button go when you push it? So I asked in the meeting, I said, where's the button go if I push that? And they said, that is a direct line to the 911 center. And that is their communication. And, uh, and that's sad. <laughs> you know, they have a school down there with, uh, with 26 students. They have a number of businesses down there. So we were able to partner up with, um, with a number of different uh, entities. With the, uh, with the school, with um, El Pomar, um, hopefully with IREA. The, the school and its kids, I think, raised $15,000. Um, so you get all these little, uh, and South Park Tell is going to put the equipment in. There's, a, uh, there's an in-kind excavator who's going to do the excavation for all the power feeds up in there. So you put all these little things in place, and all of a sudden you, you can afford the infrastructure for that broadband. So that project's going in. We have, uh, we have some meetings in 11 Mile and uh, Lake George. We've met in a, in a couple different uh, HOAs, Warm Springs, Indian Mountain Ranch. And, uh, and more importantly, over here, there was a need for uh, cell phone service on County Road 43. As many of you know, once you go by the uh, elementary school there, the cell phone services are pretty much cut out. So, um, so through all these meetings, um, that was identified, and uh, ComNet uh, is interested in, in putting a tower. And we, we had a meeting in here a month or two ago, a uh, community meeting, to, to talk about it and to, uh, to look at potential sites for, uh, for towers out there. And, uh, and it looks like that's moving forward. Um, the provider, ComNet, has, uh, is working currently with, um, with the landowner there. And, uh, you know, working out the details there, so hopefully um, we'll have some uh, cell phone service back in there. And communication is communication. It really doesn't matter how we get there. You know, initially it started out down the broadband road, but I'm finding that if it's really cell phones that you need, well, let's work on cell phones. One of the things that at the county level we did is we uh, we modified the regulations for uh, for tower uh, applications, and and the reason for that is you have all these communities across Colorado raising their hand and, uh, and, and trying to get the, uh, the providers to invest in infrastructure. So you have to make yourself uh, more attractive than the others in order for them to come look at you. And, and one of the things we heard right, off the, right from the beginning was that um, regulations were one of the number one things that, that was a hurdle that they had to go through. So. Um, we modified our regulation. You know, our previous regulations. I, I think there was about a 90-day delay or so from the from the from the time they applied to the to the time it went through. If, and then there was if everything went well. If everything, then we had pro and uh, even before the application, we had an environmental requirement to say that they had to do an environmental study, which could cost up to ten thousand dollars, before they even applied. So we've changed that around. Um, they still have to do the environmental study, but that's not until after the application is approved, which makes more sense. And there's a 30-day uh, period now for, um, for the application process. There's still a public um, vetting process where there's, um, there's a time frame. There will be a posting and a, um, an indication that you know, a tower is going to go in a certain area. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a time period that allows for uh, public comment on the tower, just like any other, uh, you know, permit permitted type structure, but um, but hopefully this will, um, you know, this will encourage uh, infrastructure providers to, to look at us a, a little harder, and um, you know, and this is a big thing. It cost so 
So a, tip, a, a monopole tower, like the tower that's going to end up in Guffey, which is only maybe 40 feet tall, maybe 50 feet tall, will probably end up costing over $100,000, uh, total, the total cost of it. The cell tower, something that will go into, um, in, like back on uh, 43, back in that area there, from ComNet, is upwards of uh, three to four hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. A tower from Verizon, which we're not <laughs> likely to see, is about a million dollars. So that kind of gives you a scale of, of how much how much cost this infrastructure is, and the amount of uh, return on investment that's required for for a provider, you know, to put this equipment in. So um, I'm I'm almost scared. Uh, <laughs> You know, we were having these meetings, and everybody's telling me, you know, this is going to be really slow and really painful, and all of a sudden we have a lot of projects that are seem like they're going to, well, uh, seem like they're going to come online this summer. And, uh, and the other, the other, the other factor in this is we have a very short build cycle in Colorado, right? We have, especially here in Park County, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, a five-month build cycle, and, and less up in South Park. Get yeah, that's what I'm area. saying. At the best, we have five months. Two weeks up at all. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, so we have to get all this kind of kind of approved and rolling so that we can get stuff in the ground. And, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, I really hope to be able to check that box off and, and, and say we we got some service um, to people. And, and the number one question that real estate people are asked from a new prospective buyer in Park <coughs> County, is there internet service here? Number one question. You know, would have thought it would have been three, four, five, maybe even, but it is the, the number one question. So there's a lot of um, location neutral jobs here. And I know, looking around, I know what a lot of you do, and a lot of you have location neutral jobs where you can either work from your home all the time or work from your home part of the time. And, and, uh, and that's becoming more and more commonplace, uh, especially in the professional world. And to, and to eliminate that possibility for somebody um, is very difficult for them to consider the purchase of a house in Park County. And, uh, and, and this goes across the board. You know, I, I don't have to explain what the values of, 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 uh, of the Internet. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Now, this has been a pet peeve of mine for a long time now. And, and there was a, one particular meeting when I was on the planning commission where this was a cell tower that would have gotten most of South Park, and it it uh, it got shot down. And, and it, th at this point, it's not it's not uh, getting ahead with communications. It's just keeping up with the rest of the world. We're not we're not trying to get ahead. We're just trying to keep our place in the in the in the queue, and, and we're getting left behind. And this is uber important. It is super, super important to, that we have good communications all throughout the county. And when Mike came on a year ago, and the right, first thing he did was show me his new phone, and he was all excited about it. And I said, I like, you, you for towers? And he goes, oh yeah, I want towers. And, and then, you know, he, he kind of was asking me, you know, I want my thing. And I'm thinking my thing's going to be water. And I'm like, oh boy, water is a really tricky one. You're going to have to be really careful. And I said, and he said, what about broadband? And I said, oh boy, do I have just the avenue for you. And I have not been able to go to these meetings. I have, you know, I've got my transportation stuff. I'm on, on the stack. And I, I, I was so excited that Mike was going to do this. And man, did he take this bull by the horns. And, and he has been just meeting after meeting. He's, he's on a lot of different, he's done really well with this. And it really is advancing. And I'm really proud of the work he's done. And that's what I want to say. Thank Good you. job. Thank you, Martin. Um, you know, the one thing I'll leave on is, is uh, I saw a map. Somebody sent me uh, a map, and it showed uh, the, all the Internet connections in 1969 in the world, in the entire world. And there were two. There was one that ran from California to Utah, and one that ran from Utah to Arizona. In the entire world, there was two. John Gore's house. <laughs> we, we, we invented this technology, and currently in the developing nations, we get a C as a grade for deployment on it. You mean Al Gore did? <laughs> and 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 as a as a state, we sit right in the middle of the of the states for deployment of broadband. We get another C in there, and you got to keep in mind these these uh, the rest of the states that score a C or a D are racing. <coughs> 
a race, and just like we are, to get infrastructure. And if we do nothing, or we sit on our laurels now, we will soon fall into the D. And I don't know about you, but a C is not an acceptable grade. You know, especially for a state that, you know, that claims to be, you know, tele a telecommunication center. You know, we pride ourselves on high tech. And uh, so anyway, we're going we're gonna to move forward, and, and I really, really think that this is, a, this is a big economic driver, or can be, for Park County. And uh, I really encourage uh, some new industry to be able to be foreseen from this. Um, state water plan, so the, uh, the governor has, um, has dictated that a, a state water plan, so the rest of the states um, all, have a, all have a water plan in place, which makes sense. Um, Colorado does not. We have operated without a, um, you know, consensus on, you know, what we're going to do um, with sp specific sources of water, what we're going to do with water in the future, and so the governor put a um, order, executive order, executive order, yeah, 1187, stating that there will be a um, state water in place by uh, 2015, and that was in 2005. -ish. Yeah. No, it was just no, last year. No, it was last year. Last year he put that order in place. Um, so, so there's um, there's eight physical um, water basins in Colorado, and and we sit in uh, in the South Platte Basin, and it's one of the largest, and it covers basically from um, from here. Yeah, from here, if you draw a line, almost down to Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs is served by the Arkansas Valley, but north of Colorado Springs, all the way up to the Nebraska line, and, uh, and all the way out to, to Kansas. And, uh, and it provides all the water for um, the things that we consider metro, the I-25 corridor. From Fort Collins all the way down to Denver and Castle Rock and everything in between. And also, there's a lot of agricultural out west there, Weld County and all that. The South Platte Basin actually has 72% of the agriculture in the state of Colorado, which is kind of surprising. Um, and a high number on the population. Though. And 80% of the population, and 80% also of the tax base. So the state plan is looking to address um, up to the year 2050. And, and how are we going to solve the, and they call it the gap, the water gap that's going to occur in 2050. And a, a couple of the major concerns are that currently there's no more water. All the water has been uh, appropriated away. So if you're a uh, if you're a developer and uh, and you want to put some houses up, you need to um, supplement the water somehow. So what's currently been well, one of the common things um, that's been going on for forever, and it happened out in South Park in, in a similar way, is is to take the water rights of of an agricultural land. And, uh, and strip them off of the land and then apply them to a municipal right. And water is treated as real property, so you can sell water independently of the land. So what's been happening um, in the East is a dry up of our agriculture. And, and it's, it's pretty easy to see that if we don't have any other tools in place that we're gonna dry up this 72% of, you know, of the ag production in Colorado. And, uh, and when you dry up something, you need to understand that it's, it's it's dried up forever. It can never be irrigated again unless you can get water rights. And they'll never get water rights again. They'll be far too expensive. So, um, so there's a couple different, you know, alternatives, um, solutions, I guess, proposed solutions to supplying the water needs of 2050. And, and, the, and the estimated population is, uh, we're currently at 5 million in the state of Colorado. They're looking at um, 10 million. They're estimating for the year 2050. So, uh, so they created all these basins, and, uh, and, and I sit on the South Platte Basin, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a fairly large voting group, and the, and the goal is that each basin is to prepare its own uh, basin implementation plan, and then in July of this year, we come together, I'm sorry, we submit these to the state, um, and the state uh, goes through the plans, combines them kind of all together, and comes up with one cohesive solution to the to the uh, to the 2050 gap. Now, as you can imagine, uh, nine basins have nine different attitudes on what they want to occur with their water. 
So I talked about um, agricultural dry up. That was one solution to it. Another is conservation, right? You can, uh, you know, you can price the water so high that people start conserving, right? That's my solution. And, uh, and, and, that's, and that's part of the solution. And the same with agricultural dry up. There, there will be, um, at least in the South, Bat South Platte Basin plan, there will be some agricultural dry up. There will be some more conservation methods. Um, the third is, uh, is storage. Um, so in the water world, you can do three things with water. As it, as it runs by you, you can use it. You can put it to use. You can store it. Or you can let it go by, and then it's gone. The only three options. So what happens in, in Colorado is on our wet years, um, we, a lot of the water runs through the state because we do not have the storage capacity to store that excess water. And um, storage is a very long-term and costly um, project, 30 years typically. Like if you want to build a Lake Powell or something like that, it's about a 30-year project. And I think that's the reason why the governor had chosen um, such a, you know, such a far date to look out to 2050. So storage is the third leg of the stool, and the fourth leg of the stool is um, trans basin diversion. So, um, so currently, um, we pipe about 500,000 acre feet from the Colorado Basin over to the South Platte Basin to supplement the water needs of, and it's mainly metro. It's mainly the metro consumption, and. Um, and that is another part of uh, the solution, the South Platte Basin Roundtable um, implementation plan that we need to, we need to leave the, um, the discussion for potentially more trans-basin um, diversion open. The, the West Slope does not like to hear this, right, as you can imagine. Um, they know that once the water is removed from, from their basin, they'll never get it back, right? And that's going to limit potentially their... Uh, their um, development in more agriculture and also their development in more um, people, more housing, more communities. So they're, they're, they're very hesitant as is, is, <laughs> is not even a way to describe it. Um, so, and, and, and keep in mind, current, we have in Park County three trans basin diversions right in our county. We have the uh, Roberts Tunnel, mm -hmm takes water from uh, the Colorado Basin. We have Montgomery Reservoir, pumps wa water up out of the Blue River and, uh, and puts it into Montgomery Reservoir. And there's also a pipe, actually, that goes all the way from the, uh, Montgomery Reservoir all the way down to Colorado Springs. And, uh, and we have a third one also, and that is from the Arkansas River Basin, which pumps water from the Arkansas, and that feeds into Spinney. Um, so we already participate in some of this trans-basin diversion, and, and likely, uh, likely we'll participate in more as, as the plan is adopted. There's a website, and we had a meeting fairly recently, a couple weeks ago, out in, out in uh, South Park, and we're looking for public comment. So there's a website, um, it's southplatbasin.com, and we encourage people to, um, you know, to fill out, there's, a, there's an online survey there, and... and let us know your feelings. What are you know? What's important here? We've identified, um, and, and Linda James has been a, a big, um, you know, a big help with uh, with my education anyway, and also a uh, also a South Platte Basin Roundtable member, member um, a big proponent on uh, environmental and recreational, which is really where um, where our county kind of fits into this whole thing. We are the headwaters for the South Platte River. Um, it all starts right up in our mountains right there. All these little streams that trickle down into the South Platte are, are the headwaters. Uh, the other headwaters way up north are the Pooter and the Thompson. And um, so we're a key player in this. And, uh, you know, we need to, we, we've invested millions of dollars in, uh, in water. Um, the only tax that, that, has, that people have approved in, in Park Sorry. County mm -hmm. is, a, is a land and water trust fund tax. It's a 1% tax. Um, that was uh, conceived 18 years ago when they tried to, uh, when they tried to take more water out of, out of the uh, aquifers in, out, in, uh, out towards South Park, and, and we needed money to fight that battle, lawyer money. And, uh, and those monies represent about a half million dollars a, a year into the land and water trust fund. 
and uh, and they go into very it's, the the wording is very specific on on the tax question. It was uh, it was uh, a tax um, for water and land with water, something like that. Yeah, and and we've done amazing things. And, and the thing about you know the thing about operating in the government environment is there's there's all these different entities that have grant money and things like that, but but a lot of them require match. So what it's been 18 years, so we've uh, we've you know uh, probably collected nine million dollars. We've probably done 20 or 30 million dollars worth of benefit from all these matching funds from the Department of Wildlife and the GoCo and all the rest of the. Um, Groups that are out there that, that we partner up with in uh, in areas related to water in uh, in Park County. Just recently here, just recently here, the uh, Deer Creek Valley Ranch, right where the uh, cemetery is, right? Deer Park right. Valley. Deer Park Valley. Valley. Deer Park Valley. Deer Park Valley, Valley Ranch Association. Ranch Association. Thank you. That one, yeah. John Woolworth's yeah. place. Yeah. Um, it's our <laughs> so so that money. Um, so, so part of that money, and I think it was about a half million dollars. It went, was a half a million, exactly. Went to uh, went to put a uh, towards a conservation easement on that land, and, and what that does now, and there was there was over fifty acre feet of water attached to that. So, um, so what that does is there's six hundred or so acres over there that is in a conservation easement. That means it can never be developed. And that water can never be taken from that land. And that's really important in South Park. And that was one of the many projects that have been completed with the Land and Water Trust Fund money. Um, so, I mean, water is obviously important to, to Park County. So please, southplotbasin.com, please complete the survey. Well, and it's important to mention, too, that, yes, we spent $500,000, but the... Uh, the association that owns the ranch, they they gave up about a million dollars oh. in in uh, development rights, mm -hmm. and also they they donated part of the conservation easement value uh, as well. So they put a lot of money into this themselves. Well, I shouldn't say put a lot of money into it. They they are not going to get a lot of money. That's right. They're and they, it right. was so important to them to have that conservation easement. That, if, that we tried to get a GOCO grant to help out with that, and we were turned down twice. And we said, we want to see this happen. And they said, well, we do too, so we don't care if we don't get the money for the conservation nation. And that says a lot about that family. And, and there, were, there are actually 22 families mm -hmm. that are actually part of that association. It's not, John, although John operates there, he actually leases it off. It's, a lot of it's there's a lot of history over there. Mm -hmm. That's it's one. I think it's I think there's only two centennial ranches in Park County. That's a ranch that's there's more than two centennial. I can think of five or okay. four right off. It's the top one of, of the centennial ranches <laughs> that, which means it's been in continual operation for a hundred years. That's that's in uh, that's in uh, Park County, and it was good that we we're and and on this side of a lot of times we talk about you know what side of the county it's on. It's always the Kenosha Pass is kind of the divide line when we talk that way. But um, there's not a lot of opportunity on this side of Kenosha Pass for, for the water thing. So, you know, when we're able to identify a project, it's, um, you know, it's really exciting to be able to, to, to work over here. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of work's been done on the other side of the pass, but that's important too. I mean, that water feeds eventually down through it. And a lot of that has to do with the partnership part. That if, if when, when we go looking for partners, they have specific things they'd like to see, and, and Parks and Wildlife has specific uh, animal corridors and specific things they want to save and protect. And because of this, uh, is, this tax is why we got the Conservation uh, Partners of the Year Award, and it, it was the um, it, it's the working together with Parks and Wildlife and, and the other partners. Uh, Beartooth Capital helped us with. Uh, the climb ranch. And that, that was a really interesting thing where we bought this big ranch, our Beartooth Capital bought the big ranch, then we put a conservation easement on it and they put three home sites on this, I don't know, it's a huge ranch, I can't remember, but three home sites on this whole ranch and nothing else will be developed and the rest of it's conservation. And and if you, you know, the climb ranch is when you're heading into South Park and you see that big uh, 
uh, it looks like a, an adobe building on the right hand yeah. side, yeah. and then it's got a kind of a cruddy roof, red roof built on top of it. You pull right in there, and if there's an open spot, you can park, and you go right in and fish. And, and it's, it's just stunning. I mean, it is a beautiful place, and it's a great opportunity for folks to go catch those big fat fish we look at the pictures of. It's elk habitat and animal habitat. There's hunting there, and it, it's, it's a, you know, and it's a great deal. It's, it's a, another example of horse trails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You can bring you a horse can, there. Yeah, bring a horse trailer in. Yeah. It's beautiful. So, just one more. And it is huge. It is a giant ranch. Yeah. And that's another one that the sales tax helped. So right. just just to note, the sales tax will sunset two more years. Right? Two uh, more? 218. Three more years? 218. It's going to expire soon. And, uh, and, that, and that is one worth, worth um, you know, we'll certainly, that'll certainly go back on the ballot. And it's, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly one I would suggest to, uh, to approve again. It's, it's put to, it's put to good use. And, and the verbiage in it, it's very clear. <coughs> we can't buy graders with it. We can't buy, you know, more county cars with it. We can't buy a new tank with it. So, um, it's very clear that it has to go to water and land with water on it. It's a Humvee. It's a, it's a <coughs> um, retail marijuana. So, uh, so when I got elected, I never thought I'd talk about this at every meeting that we had. And, uh, and finally, we, as Mark pointed out in yesterday's uh, uh, dinner meeting, uh, we haven't talked about it in a while. So, uh, which is which is a good thing. So you know, initial so so it was retail marijuana was approved that you probably saw in the paper um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and um, and the reason why was that 58 percent of the voters in Park County voted for retail marijuana. So we um, you know we represent the voters, and that's that's exactly why um, um, we voted the way we did. We initially on the ballot on the state ballot question. They indicated um, that they were going to mirror um, the liquor licenses for marijuana. And then when the legislation came out, there was a lot of holes in it that didn't really reflect that. So at the county level, we put county regulations in to, to mimic the way liquor licenses and liquor is dealt with. Um, you know, we thought, this, you know, when this came on board, that this was going to be a, you know, a big to-do, and it's really been like a non-event. We've had... Uh, Two um, marijuana facilities, uh, although medical, we've had two of them operating in, in the county for almost five years. <laughs> we haven't had any significant events or anything. It's been fairly quiet. Um, initially, we thought that we could get some tax money out of this for, for the county. And, uh, and the way the state um, you know, came down with its uh, legislation, uh, they took all the money. Surprise. And, um, so we get a little piece of it, but what came out of it was um, was we had a couple of business owners um, come forward and, and talk about this at, at uh, out in Fair Play, and what we realized was the potential for Park County is uh, is in probably in the cultivation sector of uh, of marijuana, and uh, these these places typically hire ten to fifteen people, which is and, and we are short of employers in Park County. So um, I think if there's anything that, that Park County will, um, will see out of this, any benefits, if we, if we do see any type of industry from this, it'll be in cultivation. Um, we'll see the, um, currently there's a um, moratorium on new business until uh, January 1st, 2015. Uh, right now, the only operators that can exist in the state of Colorado are the, are the people who were licensed prior, uh, prior to this being passed. So um, there's been some interest, um, and I guess we'll have to see how it, uh, how it all plays out. Um, I've heard some interesting developments uh, in the past couple of days. Somebody told me that uh, bookings in Colorado were up 24% this year for, for people coming here and staying here. Green tourism. There was uh, there's something like a 75% uh, increase in this month the April uh, 420. Right? So there, there's been large amounts of people booking uh, and coming to stay here. So it, it may benefit us in ways that we haven't hadn't even anticipated. Uh, How much is that in St. Paul in Park County? 
anymore. It's VRBO is what's been affected more than anything because there's not a there's not a large hotel. Right. We were down in Colorado Springs the other day, and uh, we went to that that uh, um, the, the awards dinner that we went to, and you could smell pot everywhere in that mm -hmm. DoubleTree hotel down there. I mean, there was people's. There's definitely people coming here and buying pots. So. And I, I don't know how it's going to end up. I don't know what the results are going to be. This was something, and I, and I said this last night too. This is something that was not. We didn't bring it on. This was brought on by the citizens, and it, it was a citizens' initiative. It was put into the constitution, and it, it's something that. Uh, and then we voted on it three times in Park County, and it's voted. It's gone that way every time. So we're, we're just trying to. It's a, it's a whole new deal, you know. We we got we had some somebody all upset the other day talking about a. The, the, a business that, that uh, a grow in, in South Park about how much water it was going to use and there's so there's some concerns about that and that wasn't you know we don't handle that the state handles wells and, and how commercial wells are, are dealt with but it's that's something to think about is, is water consumption and then there's you know but so far there's been no rise in crime or as a matter of fact we've got the lowest crime we've had in a long time. So, it, I mean, it's as low a crime as we've had. And, uh, I was going to say people are just happy to be stoned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it inspires people to commit crimes. <laughs> From what I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Dorito sales are up. Though. Dorito yeah. sales. Are up, so, <laughs> so um, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, see what happens with that. Um, a BLM master plan. So. Um, doesn't affect really on this side of the pass as, as much as the other um, as the other side, but um, Park County is is working together with the Bureau of Land Management. So we have uh, so the BLM owns a lot of uh, the mineral leases out across South Park, and there's a lot of um, you know, potential natural gas out there. It's very very deep. It's like 14,000 feet or so. But um, this is kind of exciting because the BLM. Um, what 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 this normally what would happen is uh, there's just all these little pieces out there and you as a as a as a business bid on it you get the lease you drag out your drilling equipment and you just start drilling and uh, what this does is uh, is this ties everything all together as uh, as one as one area and uh, and it identifies prior to anybody going in there and drilling you know what the things they have to be cautious about if there's a water supply nearby if there's um, you know a, uh, a you know a range for for wildlife to go Gold through waters fish and waters so um, and this is something that the, the that the bureau of land management has not really done in the past they're working with another group i think in utah i don't know that that's completed and and they were very willing and it, and, and it's very exciting to work with them there to so they own the minerals, but um, and they have every right to extract them. But they need to be able to extract them in a responsible way. You know, that doesn't hurt. Um, you know, the environment, the watershed, you know, all the other things associated with them. So, um, so that's in place. It's it's a long term thing. Their their next uh, master plan is not going to be released. I think until 2017. Um, but we're part of that, and and it's likely that our our resources are so deep compared to the. Uh, the other places that they're looking at, they're working in now in Colorado, that it's going to take them a long time to get to us, just because it's, it's just not cost effective. They can go other places and, you know, drill a thousand feet and get the resource out, or 14,000 feet. Did but, you read that email this morning? Did yes. It, it, the, 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 it said that, it, well, it says that the, um, that the industry may be unhappy because they're the moratorium is going to happen until the until the uh, master plan comes out. So they're a little concerned. That, but there's there's leases that they already have, and most of them are ten year leases. So those will be it, it'll be all under this pretty soon under this master leasing plan. And it studies the cumulative effect, which has never been done before. And it, and it, you can you can say if, when they're approving one well, they say okay, well this is what the, the cause and effect is going to be of this one well. But they don't study it as the entire area having these wells and what the cumulative effect of all those wells would be. So this will look at that. And it, and it also, uh, we, we were worried that they were going to keep leasing them until this 
came out, and it would set us back years further with having the leases under uh, this master leasing plan, which gives it it, it, it does something for the industry too. It gives them an idea of what this whole area, if they want to drill and they want to work in that area, they know what they're going to be dealing with ahead of time. So they, they have an idea of what their expenses are going to be and what their, and, and this is all mitigation. It's all to make sure that the well casings are solid and that there's no problems and, and that everything works well. So it, it's a really good thing and it hasn't been done before. And the other thing I should mention on the, you know, on the oil stuff is, you know, it's Park County working together with, with CUSP, you know, has, has got, has put a lot of um, monitoring type wells in there For al baseline. already to get, to get a baseline of, of what's out there right now before anybody comes in there and does any kind of drilling. Um, you know, and that's really important so that, uh, so that if there is, uh, you know, a change in, in that baseline, we can identify it quickly and, uh, you know, and address, and address the issue. And the results were all over the place. But our our basin, our our water is such a mixed up jungle. South Park. The South, South, South Park water. South Park. It, it, it's where that old ocean or sea used to be, the inland sea, and, and it is just one crazy mixed up aquifer under there. That their uh, cusp is is doing uh, several studies of the flow of the water and. and we want to study it a lot more. It's a it's a very complex aquifer. And the county has a uh, yeah, and, and they're split up. And so. the county has invested um, has helped with the funding of uh, some of those studies. Actually, the county the land water trust fund has paid for all of it. There you go. Your tax dollars at work again in a good uh, in a well, good area. I did hear what you said. The land and water trust fund, the sales tax has paid for all of the studies. Uh, in South Park to get the baseline before anything comes in out there. Not just oil and gas, but also uh, uranium, which was a big thing going on a few years ago. So we will be able to, if any wells are hurt in the future, we will have the information to uh, get, get them new wells drilled or something. Do the feds allow you to, local government, to have significant input into the just talking about fracking or is that just pure federal regs well our where our voices gets to show up in this in this master plan that's where we get to that's where we get to voice on um, our local concerns um or do they really listen i guess we well it, it'll be written it'll it'll be part of the plan so they'll they'll have to it i mean that's the importance of this this is a major major uh, accomplishment because you know the feds are the 600 pound gorilla and without this being documented like this they would come in just like just like Mark said and just you know pick the wherever they got the lease for them you're going to drop the bid they in there study that little spot for yeah. a second and then they you don't have to worry there. about any of the surrounding areas so this is this is a big move um, and, and, and and as Mark pointed out the moratorium on new uh, lease grants until the 2017 approximate 2017 plan comes out is, is huge. Um, huge. Um, on notes on plan, strategic and, master. And, and, oh, sorry. One more thing. Park County's not pro mining. We're not anti mining. We're for responsible mining. And we want. We don't want our water and our land damaged by this. It's got nothing to do with stopping it. We're, we just want it done in a clean, responsible, best practices way. And we really don't have a choice. I mean, the, the you know the, the mineral rights are, are not owned by by most of the, the most of the BLM, and they have every right to to extract those in a responsible manner. We we're pretty much blown away by their openness and willing to work with us, and that their uh, both the state and the feds. I mean, normally the feds just hammer you, and these guys have changed their tune, and, and it's a it, it was a great meeting, and and. It, you know, Eddie Coachman and, and our A environment for the advisory board for the environment, they are uh, just beside themselves with, with uh, a feeling that we're really working together, you know, that, that, that all the agencies are working together for our good. And, and <coughs> that, 
that has to reflect a lot on our BOCC's attitude and courtesy, because I th think it might be fair to say nationwide the feds can be much more demanding and not listening. So what you're describing is a tribute to how you're approaching it, given the feds throughout the country. I've, I've been amazed at the at the partnerships that that Park County has has been able to um, you know manage with with all the big departments with the Forest Service with the BLM with the Parks and Wildlife. We have um, an amazing staff. It, Gary it, Nichols is unbelievable, and, and his work has been just phenomenal. The uh, and and you know I, I, I think it's historic. You know historically we've worked on so many projects together. And, and we really line up well. And uh, I've not met one agency yet, um, although we haven't had, um, you know, EPA or anybody like that. I haven't been around for the EPA meetings, but they've, yeah, they they've been consistently coming to AP meetings. Really, for about a year and a half. And and are they in a friendly in a friendly? Extremely nature? friendly. That's another good example. Um, and that's great because um, you know you certainly don't want to. Upset the 600-pound gorillas in the room, and uh, and and they listen to us. They listen to our local needs, and we work together with trying to solve their their needs. And in a they were even talking about our communications issues and, and, and a willingness to help with that. Well, and that's the nexus of it. We had heard nothing but bad. Well, we talk. We, we go to a meeting with one you know with one issue that we're going to talk about, and then it, and that extends to well, how can we help each other in these other areas that we need to work with? And, and it's I don't know. It's 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 very it's been very very encouraging. Um, and and I, I thought that was going to be a lot more of a difficult process in some of these other areas that we that we work together. Um, I'm going to wrap this up here. Before we, uh, strategic master plan. So our strategic master plan is basically the plan that says, uh, you know, this is uh, this is our vision forward. Here's what we're here's what we think is going to happen. Here's what we're going to going to do to uh, here's some, a couple goals and here's how we're going to try to meet those goals and and uh, and it's out of date um, and it's out of date. It, a typical municipality. Uh, you know, as a, about every 10 years or so, you try to update things like that. And ours is out of date by, I think, I think we're at 12 or 13 years out of date. And, uh, you know, to give you an example, um, it has our population level in Park County, I think, at 45,000 right now in the plan. And we're at 16,000. And it's between 16 and 17. We haven't changed much. Though. No, no. We've actually gone down a little bit, you know. That's a good thing. And, and, you know, and it, it reflected the information that they had, you know, 12 or 13 years ago about population trends and, you know, and they used those numbers to forecast and, and, and now we know we have different information. So um, we've, uh, we've gotten a, I believe the Dole Grant was approved for this. So we'll, yeah. um, so we'll be doing, uh, and, and this is not, this is not the, uh, you know, the county or the BOCC or Mike Brazell saying this is what the Park County is going to look like in 10 years. This is a community. Oh, this is a community effort. So we'll walk this around to multiple times to, to all the different areas, get input from all the different areas, and uh, you know, and build the plan from uh, you know from the community up. And the master plan is not law; it's a guiding document, which the we, when, whenever we're writing our LURs or rewriting our LURs, which we do constantly, the the. Uh, I'm smiling at Jim there. <laughs> These are land, land, use, land, use, land, use, land use regulations. Yeah, land use regulations, which which are a living document. And they have to they have to reflect the current uh, state of of the county. So it, it's it is it's a very important document, but it's not law. It it guides the law as it's written. So you 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 whenever you look at a new uh, development or whatever they say, how does this fit in the master plan? And they'll, it, there'll be a description of, of how it coincides with our master plan or it doesn't work with our master plan and the plan <coughs> commission will decide whether to recommend or not recommend based on how this, the LURs and the master plan mesh. So it, 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 it's a very important planning document, a guiding principle document. And, and many 
many decisions are based on that. That's there is a lot. It's, you're constantly referencing, well, what does the plan say about about this suggestion? So, so anyway, that'll be coming down the pike. Um, you know, please get involved when you see a, a meeting. And, and it's I'll bring, I'll bring everybody food. can be involved. <laughs> it, it's, and it, they're fun. It, the master plan meetings are fun. They really are interesting. I've done a couple in Alma, and, and it, it, it's really good to hear the vision of the people, and that's what really comes out of the meetings, is what you hope, the direction you'd like to see Park County go and what you hope to see it become. And that's, that takes a lot of thought, and it takes a lot of uh, soul searching to, to think about where you want your county to be for the next 10 years, where you want it headed, what direction you want it headed. Do you want more trails? Do you want more highways? Do you, are you, uh, what are your biggest concerns of, of protection? Are you worried about the rivers? Are you worried about the air, uh, air quality? Are you worried about uh, lighting? These are all things you know that come from it. So, so be thinking about joining in the master plan and what you'd like to see, the direction you'd like to see your county go. And the last, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'd like to ask you something because um, we bought. Years ago, UMC bought a land use regulation book, and it was my understanding that every time there was a change, we were to get those changes. We have never received any changes, so that book is obsolete. Can we have a new book on the sure, land I'm sorry, use UMC? United, 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 United Mountain Community. We fought the, the Sunriser development for years and years. We can and our homeowners, Berlin homeowners even bought one of those land use regulation books. But we've never received any updates, so we can, can we get, get one. Yeah, and it is on the website. Well, yeah, but who wants to print all of that out? Well, I think no. there's a copy of the library. Huge. I mean, we, we, can, we, can, we can make that. I think there's one in the library. I know, but a, a book of Elliot. Uh, 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 how uh, updated it is. I don't know. It's 2013. <laughs> Mark's volunteering. He's going he's gonna to get, get you. He's going to get you. The last thing on the list, we're almost there, is, uh, is uh, economic development plan. And um, so, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a wall of, of studies. The government loves to study things. And, uh, you know, it's identified areas that um, where Park County uh, could could be most logically successful in, uh, in economic development, and uh, identifies uh, tourism and recreation as, as you know one of the top top things. And, uh, and we've been talking uh, we've been talking a lot over the last you know the time I've been here anywhere about long term planning. And, and the one thing I'll say about you know my, my other two colleagues is is. Uh, is their long-term planners, and, and I, I appreciate that. You know, I, you know, the, the, we're we're planning for things that that we're not going to be around for, but um, but for the for for the betterment of uh, you know the county as a whole, and uh, and not just doing these short-term things that'll get you reelected kind of thing. And uh, and economic development, you know, is is one of those areas. It's kind of long-term, and and it's uh, it's really easy to talk about it, but until you put some resources towards it, you're going to get nowhere. And, uh, and we're doing that this year. We've, uh, they've kicked off um, our county administrator and a, and a number, of, uh, number of other people have gotten together um, for their first um, economic development plan meeting. Uh, we're going to look forward on how we can um, work together with uh, the chambers and, and all the other groups. There's all these little pieces all over the county that, are, that have all these little efforts going. And if we can link them all together, you know, and, and uh, you know, combine all these resources, I, th I think, uh, you know, I think the whole county will, will benefit tremendously. In an example, um, we were at a, we were at a BOCC meeting, and uh, we had a, a tourism director present. And, uh, and the three commissioners each had a different device. I think, I think Dick was at home that day. He was working off his computer. You had a phone. I, I may have had a tablet. And we all looked and said, you know, um, <laughs> Dick, Dick, Dick looked up Park County Fishing. Okay, now we have partnered with the Department of, of Parks, the Department of Wildlife at the time. I don't know how, millions of dollars in all these fishing projects, right? And, and you, you search Park County Fishing, and on the state, on their site, nothing. 
Every, it shows everything else but a big hole in Park County. Um, <laughs> one of us, I think Mark typed in, you know, um, mountain biking Park County and a lodging in Breckenridge. Some county came up. <laughs> um, and, and this is just a reflection, you know, of, you know, of how we're represented out there. It's one example. I, I was and just on another a site. I was in Woodland Park the other day, and I typed in local restaurants, all Colorado Springs. Not, not one Woodland Park restaurant came up. It was all it, so. And then so I've been. It's this is a weird thing, this search engine thing, and how it works, and, and we need somebody that just does that. Well, and and, <laughs> and and we have we have spent so much money. You talk about Gary Ray's right? got all these trails and all all. All, all documented, but it's it's in paper form, right? And and people, you know, use electronic form now to to, to go out there. So um, there's going to be, I, I think, in the next in the next couple of years, you'll see a large push for for economic development. You have all these little areas. I think Bailey's ready to pop, and you know, Tim uh, Tim's been a driving force behind the, the Bailey trails, and, and I, I really think that um, this is going to be a this is going to be a big driver, um, you know, to really uh, to really develop that whole downtown Bailey area. And we don't lack vehicles coming through. I mean, we have fifty thousand vehicles a weekend say. drive through. You know, we need to we need to have we some need to stop them. Yeah, we need to have. You know, my suggestion when I came first on board was a toll booth, but that got nixed. <laughs> so uh, so now we're going to have to spend some money in, in economic development. And I'm excited about this. I think, yeah. uh, and, and it's it, it's really throughout the entire county. You know, it's you know it's Bailey, it's Lake George, it's Alma. It's across the entire county that that this really needs to be applied. And uh, I don't know. I think I think it's right for it. I think uh, I think Park County is ready for it. And, uh, and I'm pretty excited. We did kind of tie the economic development plan with what Mark and you were talking about earlier. The uh, Constitutional amendment on uh, marijuana, and I think we were in the springs when you said you could smell it in the in the double tree. Yeah. D doesn't Park County kind of have a a jump start on yeah. that? Yes, we <laughs> do. And I guess my my question is, even though it was the people and a constitutional amendment, from what you read, both state and some county regs, one could get the impression that the current vested legal structure didn't take kindly to the people's constitutional amendment and are going to almost regulate it out of business or tax it to death. So my question is, well, maybe the other side of that coin is if we promoted that as an economic development, since it is legal and now currently regulated and taxed, make that a an economic development, put the emphasis on a different syllable. We could have the mellow in the meadow parties or... <laughs> 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 Well, I'm promoting your business without your consent. Yeah. Yeah. My point really is to maybe turn a negative into a positive, and with the search engines you mentioned, uh -huh. I just a thought. You know, the, the, the Breckenridge, their bookings have been out, out the roof this year, and a lot of it has to do with the good snow they've had, but I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, green tourism, too. And that the... the uh, like, like I said, I've heard the VRBOs are just the uh, vacation rentals by owners are just written like crazy. They're all booked up, and, and you, you, there are foreign uh, European companies trying to find houses that they can just. They're calling the, they're contacting the owners of the VRBOs and trying to book it for the whole year to to bring people just just for that. And so, that was your comment, like like Amsterdam's red light district is known throughout the world. I mean, make Park County the green. I don't. We, we have to be careful. <laughs> that's that's, that's, a, that's, that's a, a, you know, we don't want to we don't want to overdo this thing. It, yeah. It's, it's yeah. already it's already launched itself pretty well. It? And and uh, you know it, the the uh, the 
the dispensary in Alma, it, it, it's people our age. It's not kids. I mean, it's not it's not eighteen year olds. You're not seeing that. You're seeing people in their fifties and sixties. Yeah, and, and they're yeah. you know, they're not they're driving nice cars. They're not. It's not the VW bus full of kids coming up there like it was uh, ten years ago at the same house before it was legal. And there, there, there was always a guy that sold pot there. I mean, he was always there. And there was two or three different people that lived there at different times. And then you'd see the cars full of kids, you know, looking all around and all that, and nervous. And they're, they're gone. Those kids aren't there anymore. It's, it's people our age. And this, this, this may be addressed in the strategic master plan meetings. You know, it may all tie together to see, you know, what... What, what direction do you want to see your county? You know? I'd, I'd be surprised if they said we want to see it the weed capital of Colorado. <laughs> and that was, but, but if that's the case... Uh, our assessor was saying that, he goes, boy, you guys did a smart thing. He goes, I'm already getting all these calls and information on, on uh, people that are wanting to open different kinds of businesses and, and, and the, the, the cultivation and so forth. And uh, You know, I was talking to the, the dispensary owner in Alma, and he said that his operation there uses, uh, uh, I think it was 12,000 gallons a month, which is a, a household in Alma, you could have 10,000 gallons a month is how much you're allowed before your price goes up. So it, it's not using all that much water. I mean, it's using it's using some water, but I don't, I don't think that it's all that significant. I think if they're growing corn or wheat, they'd be using probably a little more water. So I, 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 and we haven't seen increase in no. crime. I, it's down, like like Gene was laughing about there. They're too, they're, they're too high to People commit People sit at home and get mellow. <laughs> yeah, they get relaxed. So I, I, it's been very positive so far. I, I don't know that we want to focus on you know our economic development plan on. I was going to say strictly on marijuana. Not no, I, I'm not marijuana. suggesting that at all. Yeah. I'm thinking it may that may be a factor. It could be absolutely, and and, and you're right. It, Colorado in general has seen a big tourism spike. And my personal opinion is that the surrounding states are just sitting there watching us um, iron out all the problems, iron out, oh, yeah. figuring out how they're going to institute it um, in their state, just like the lottery. I mean, when the lottery first came out, states went, what? Legal gambling. And then the states showed how much uh, tax money was collected off of that. And, uh, you know, and then the rest of the states all follow in. And, and as soon as that happens, then we won't be the center. Uh, you know, we'll just be another normal state. That's my personal opinion. I don't know. We've yet to see that. But, um, but it, it could potentially be, have an economic impact on it, on us. Um, no, you just, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark's yeah. earlier Silver comment. Silver linings is what I've made my life based around, you know. Yeah. Don't pay attention to that black cloud. Look at that silver lining. Mm -hmm. So I want to open. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to open this up for. Uh, that, that's. I don't. Do you want to add? Did I miss? I mean, I missed a lot of things. But any anything critical that, that, that I missed off the. No. We've done in the last uh, six months. But, you know, we've had some interesting transportation developments around uh, Park County. The um, we got that section of uh, 285 redone, and the passing lanes in it. I think is a good, significant change. My, what I've done mostly is work with CDOT and. Uh, Dick mostly did the local roads. I did the state highways, and uh, both with, from the Central Front Range and from the State Transportation uh, Advisory Commission. And there, there's some interesting things going on with Denver and the and the and the highways money, and, and they're changing formulas right now. They're looking at formulas that include population. And at first, I was just terrified that meant we wouldn't get any more money, but our region has a pretty decent population because of Colorado Springs being in it. And when, you know, what we all do is we, we all fight over money. And there's five regions for, for transportation money, and, and we're uh, region two. Well, region two includes Colorado Springs, which, which uh, is a uh, significant population. And so what you do is you look at the formulas, and when you're fighting about the formulas, it's because you want your number to go up. And so you look at what we have now, it's 18%. And when they started adding in these new formulas, it brought it up to 19.6%. So it, it, what, what I was warning them about was if you, if 
you have a large population that's trying to get somewhere, say, to Breckenridge, and they have to go through a small population area, and suddenly you have this hourglass effect where there's no money being spent on transportation. And, and that leads me to my next thing, which is my, I called the day about, which is this unbelievable amount of traffic that's been coming up to 85 from the ski areas. And we get it all through our part of the county, which can't handle that many people. And the night before last, they sent them through. They didn't send a sand truck through. So this is the closure of I-70 is what you're saying? They closed it. Yeah, when they closed I-70 and they brought oh, yeah. everybody down Highway 9 and up 285, it is mayhem. And it's just crazy up there because you got a two-lane road with no stop signs or no stop lights, and so it's solid traffic, and you're sitting there. It's, there's just cars, you, you, and, and you, you eventually just pull in front of somebody and hope they stop. And so, la the night before last, it took five hours to get from Breckenridge to Alma. So if you have all those employees that are over there working. And they get off work, and I seven. They send I seventy through. They don't check cars for decent tires. They got Camaros and slicks mm -hmm. sliding down the mountain. A, a, a eighteen wheeler jackknifed on Hoosier Pass at the switchbacks right before you get into um, Blue River there, and it was a nightmare. So I called this morning, and we're gonna have a meeting with uh, CDOT, uh, our Region Two, which we got transferred to from Region One. And at first. I worked with those guys at, at Pikes Peak Area Council of Government, uh, Tom Mona and Doug uh, Lawler, and I was pretty excited at first, but this this winter has been hell up there and, and through here, through this whole 285 corridor, and you know, we also have all of Colorado Springs coming through Palma, not just South Denver, and so it, and then they're advertising on the radio in Breckner saying people come on through Alma. <laughs> so it's, it's been, and it's good for business, but we need a, a, a contingency plan with CDOT for when they send the cars over, that they send two plow trucks over with sanders and sand everything and plow everything as their book flow of traffic is coming through. It has to be addressed, in my mind, it has to be addressed as they're making the switch from 70 to, to 285, yeah. 9 and 285. Is it possible they could put up some emergency stoplights? I mean... So, well, I ask, that's what I, I asked for, you know, either state troopers or, or some law enforcement that could, uh, it'll probably end up being us, I mean, but somebody has to stop the traffic for a minute or oh, two and then let it go again so that there's somewhere that people can get on the road because it's just a, a nightmare. But, but, like Mike said, and, and he got stuck in it, uh, what, a month ago, two months, two months ago? ago? Four hours to get from, from Brad here. So, but, but, but the night before last was especially bad, you know. So yeah, that, there was no tractor trailer, it was just cars. And, and just slowly driving. And what I, my real fear is, we're going to get a horrible blizzard, it's going to hit, right when they send them all over here, there's going to be 18-wheelers, <coughs> spread out over 285 out in the park, and now those people are going to be stuck and they won't have anywhere to take them. There's nowhere for them to stay warm. They're going to be run out of gas. There's no gas from Fair Play to mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I, I mean, I was, I was yelling at them at, at my stack meeting. Of, I, is, we have to address this. What is the plan with CDOT now? I mean, it's coming this way, widening these roads. I haven't kept up with it and everything because you know Schaefer's Crossing was the last one. Yeah. So now what are they? The, do you know what the next? The, there really aren't any more. Any more plans to widen to four lanes anymore. You're talking about the we can't even get shoulders. I'm trying to get shoulders and. What, Oh, I thought All Bailey of, was supposed to be 2015 or something when they first started out. Yeah, there, there's not any money now. And, oh. and the, what? Well, with all this marijuana, they should have heard all that <laughs> money. Schools. Goes, that goes money goes to schools. Schools. Going to schools. schools. And, well, you know, schools I, and roads. They, they need to spend, we need more money for transportation. This isn't our problem. This isn't it's my state. problem. It, it, it's Every state has this problem. Some, some states have more money than others. They have their own money that they can put in towards it. What, in, the, in our area, 
our state is 100% HUTF. There's no general fund money going into it. That's gas tax money. Uh, highway well, yeah. user tax fund. It's what yeah. you pay when you buy gas. It hasn't gone up since 1990. It's 20 something cents a gallon yeah. is what the tax is. It doesn't change as gas goes up and down. It's no, not a percentage. It's and so uh, as cars use less fuel, there are less gas taxes. And, and it, it was it was a wedge like this. And when Mike was talking before about the gap in, uh, this is the gap. And, and what filled it was that registration, the faster, mm -hmm. uh, faster money, and that just kept us at four million. And, and we've been at four million for. I checked it uh, when I first got in. It had been ten years that it hovered around three, three point seven to four point one, somewhere in there. And that's about how much money we get in HUTF. We don't really know how much we're going to get until they send it to us. Uh, and that's the way it works. Well, with all the hybrid cars, too. I mean, that's yeah, what you've got to make it. And there was, oh, there was, there was big talk about they're going to put gauges in that read how many miles you've gone and check every car, and then they're going to have to turn it all in. And it seems so much simpler just to say the gas tax is so many percent of what gas is, you know, 20, whatever percent. I, I heard a radio show the other day, and he was just reaming the federal departments of transportation of wasting all that money, throwing all that money away. And I go to these meetings every month, the Pikes Peak Area Council of Government, the, the uh, Central Front Range Transportation Region, and then the staff meetings. And all we do is try to figure out ways to piece together the roads so that we can keep traveling. And, and that, it, they do an unbelievable job. They, it, it is an, a nearly impossible job. And, well, I know. They planned 20, 25 years ahead of time. Yeah, yeah we're working on the 2030 plan right now. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. But one thing that I would add that, that, a, lot of, that a lot of people don't realize is um, is the funds Park County has, the, as Mark mentioned, the uh, highway use taxes from gasoline, are, are the only monies that, that really support our, our road and bridge. And... Uh, so people, uh, you know, we get calls, ah, you know, I, I pay a lot of taxes living in Park County, and uh, <laughs> in, in reality, uh, none of your property tax Two, really $250,000 uh, tax is how much goes in out of the general fund, so, two fifty out of the $4 million. So I met one person that knew the number, and that was uh, in my, in my uh, Boy Scouts um, like two or three nights ago. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I was addressing this, and the lady said, no, I know exactly how much. So her house is roughly a $300,000 Tax, tax unit, and uh, nine dollars. Nine dollars out of her taxes goes to pay for road and bridge. So, um, but most people don't realize that. And uh, the people really who pay our, our for our road and bridge are the people who drive a lot. Mm -hmm. So you can thank them, all the commuters yeah. that are running back That's and forth, putting every day. you know, putting twenty five five thousand miles on on their gas pigs. You know. Um, they're the people you should you should thank. I was asking Tom this morning, are those road, you know, as we're interviewing road and bridge directors, I said, are they looking at how many miles of roads we have and how much money they have to fix them up? Is that why we can't get a road and bridge director? Because they know they're going to have rotten fruit thrown at them because they can't. It, people ask us all the time at CCI, how in the world do you do 1,700 miles with only $4 million? You guys are amazing. And I go, well... Sometimes their roads are a little rough, and most of our roads are dirt, and sometimes they don't get all the attention that, that they could use. And, I like and to live on a dirt road. Well, let's, um, we're running late. Let's, let's let, um, let's let people, let's hear the, let's hear the feedback, well, the reason why we're really here.